Hey there, if you've been following this channel for a while, you already know some of my all-time favorite foods are cruciferous vegetables. They're amazing for your health, your digestion, and they're just plain delicious. But the truth is, they're not for everyone. So what should you do if you want to eat the plant paradox way, but you don't want to overdo it on the cruciferous veggies? Well, in this video, I'll tell you exactly what to do and share a few of my favorite non-cruciferous vegetable options with you. But first, I've got a question for you. Are there any diet-related questions on your mind? Maybe an ingredient you're dying to know about, or a trend diet that seems a bit questionable. Whatever's on your mind, go ahead and drop me a line below in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer it in one of my videos. In fact, the reason I'm talking about non-cruciferous vegetables today is because so many of you have written in and asked about them. So let's get right to it. What are some good alternatives to cruciferous vegetables? Well, first let's talk about why you're avoiding cruciferous veggies in the first place. For a lot of people, it's simply that they've never had well-cooked cruciferous vegetables before. So they think they don't like them. And if that's the case, I encourage you to check out some of the recipes on this channel before writing them off entirely. But let's say your doctor has told you to avoid cruciferous veggies, whether it's for thyroid health reasons or other health-related reasons. If that's the case, you should 100% listen to your doctor and use more of the veggies featured in this video instead. So, if you're skipping broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, bok choy, kale, collards, and arugula, what the heck is left to eat? Well, lots of things, from leafy greens to quick cooking veggies and more. Whether you want to saute, braise, or eat your veggies raw, there's still something you can use, starting with one of my all-time favorite multi-purpose veggies, asparagus. I love it because you can quick cook asparagus over high heat, roast it, use it in stir fry, shave it raw as noodles, and even make it into soup. It's incredibly nutrient rich, delicious, and just about always available in the grocery store, making it super convenient too. Now it's kind of got a bad reputation, especially among people who have only eaten canned asparagus in the past. But the truth is, if you cook it fast over very high heat, it's got a sweet, nutty flavor and doesn't get tough, stringy, or mushy. So even if you haven't been a fan in the past, please try it again. Just cook it fast and hot, or eat it raw. Now, another one of my favorite quick cooking veggies is dandelion greens. See, just like asparagus, they are versatile, easy to prepare, and perfect for a busy weeknight meal. You can saute it in about two minutes flat, use it in soups and braises, or even toss it with olive oil and roast it to make chips like kale chips, but without the kale. And speaking of nice, crunchy veggies, give celery a try. You've had it in chicken salad, Thanksgiving stuffing, and as the base in soups, but it's way more versatile than most people give it credit for. It's great raw in salads, either diced or shaved thin, is fantastic roasted or sauteed, and adds a great texture to just about everything you put it in. And don't forget the tops and leaves of celery. They're the most flavorful part after all. Now, another great flavor boosting veggie is onion. And of course, it's cousins, leeks and garlic. They're all members of the allium family, and whether you eat them roasted, sauteed in plenty of olive oil, caramelized, or cooked into a hearty, delicious soup, there's virtually no way to make them boring. In fact, I start many dinners by sauteing some onions and garlic in olive oil. Doesn't matter whether I'm cooking leafy greens, sweet potatoes, or some wild-caught seafood. Onions and garlic are the perfect way to start. Now, I should remind you, another one of the healthiest veggies on the planet is non-cruciferous, and I'm talking about mushrooms. And just like a lot of people use roasted cauliflower in place of meat, but if you're giving up cruciferous veggies, mushrooms are a way better option. Plus, they're super flavorful. They've also got some powerful benefits when it comes to supporting your health, boosting your longevity, 
and keeping your whole body in top shape. In fact, you know the old saying that goes, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? It should have been mushroom instead of apple, in my opinion. Now, one of the keys to cooking mushrooms correctly is to give them plenty of room to brown in the pan. So use the biggest skillet you've got and really turn the heat up. That way, the water in the mushrooms has a chance to evaporate and you get the chance to develop that rich, meaty, delicious flavor. Now, if you're a salad lover, good news. Most lettuces are non-cruciferous, and so are most herbs. Just steer clear of kale, arugula, and cabbage in your salads, and you'll be just fine. Personally, I like a mix of red leaf lettuce. It's high in polyphenols, endive, chicory, radicchio, and plenty of fresh herbs as the base for a salad. Believe me, once you start adding herbs, you'll get hooked because just a sprinkle of parsley or mint really takes your salad to the next level. Plus, it's a great way to use up leftover herbs before they go bad. Then add whatever veggies you like, top with plenty of extra virgin olive oil and vinegar, and you'll be good to go. Personally, I like some thin sliced fennel. It's non-cruciferous, maybe a few pieces of sweet onion, some toasted walnuts, and a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. If I'm going for a treat, I'll add some pomegranate seeds too, when they're in season at least. Of course, that's just what I like. The possibilities for your salads are endless. But before I go, let me list off just a few more non-cruciferous vegetables real fast, so you know just how much you've got to work with artichokes, jicama, carrots, beets, sweet potatoes, sunchokes, jackfruit, radicchio, lettuce, seaweed, cactus, celery root. And that's just the start. After all, my goal is to make the plant paradox easy, no matter what your health concerns are. And I think you'll notice, even if cruciferous veggies are off the table, there's plenty you can still enjoy. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Thank you.